Hi everybody, I'm so glad you're able to join me today. Um, I wanted to share with you, uh, again, an effort to uh, create a dragonfly. You may have joined me for some of the other uh, videos that I've recently released, and uh, you may have seen some of these. This one I created as part of the organic uh, watercolor that I was doing, with this design being made by uh, loose uh, tea leaves. And uh, I think it turned out fairly well. Then I, I migrated to this one, which is the same concept. It was also the loose tees creating this image, and then the, the dragonfly over here. But since that time, I've just continued to be somewhat fascinated with these uh, dragonflies. So I created this image which has a different quality to it. It's, it's uh, strictly the watercolors this time. And then I've done a couple other images as well, uh, and this one is the most recent. Uh, but they're basically the same concept. I just like to deal with the, the loose uh, paint and the brightness of the colors of these uh, Daniel Smith watercolors. So I thought we'd try another one today. Uh, it's probably going to be somewhat the same concept that I've been pursuing, but everyone seems to turn out just slightly differently, and uh, I like that free flow quality of the image. So uh, I, I hope you'll join me as far as uh, uh, trying this experiment. So I'm going to start out uh, using the Princeton uh, Elite round brush number 12 here. It's a fairly sizable brush. It allows me to apply uh, quite a bit of water in the first the first four wing here of the the dragonfly. So we'll just let it kind of do its own thing. The water is such a a playful dance on the paper. Now I will attach all of the uh, supplies uh, below on the page so you can, can follow those if you are interested. But for the most part, uh, these will be the Daniel Smith paints and I'll mention them as, I, as I'm applying them. So uh, now to apply the paint, I'm going to use this Princeton Snap. This is a number four round, so it's a little smaller, more intricate. Uh, design or, or application on the paper. So I'm going to start with the bright blue here along the top edge of the dragonfly's forewing. We'll just see how it plays here on top of the, the wing. There's something about the translucence of these dragonfly wings that is so appealing to me. I hope you find them that way too. Trying to keep the, the hue of comparable value in both wings, of course. Then we'll add a little purple. Uh, that first blue that I was using was the cobalt blue and uh, now I'm going to use a little of the ultramarine violet. This is kind of a vivid shade of, of purple too. Apply this more along the bottom edge but spread it out throughout the wing as well. And then maybe just a little turquoise in this wing as well. In 
this case, I think I'm going to use this uh, uh, iridescent electric blue from Daniel Smith. This adds such a, a rich quality to the wing transparency too. And because it's an iridescent paint, it has sort of a glowing quality to it as well. I'm painting this with just no particular strategy, just letting the paint play on the paper. It's one of the most enjoyable parts of painting, isn't it? Just letting the paint do its own thing and watching how it it turns out. Okay, I think that's good for now. Now we'll try doing the hind wing and in this case also we'll paint the wing with water first and I will try my very best to keep it as separated from the top wing as I can so that the paints don't really merge between the two wings. I see there's a little bit of blue that's coming from the fore wing but that's okay. We don't need to be paranoid about it, but I will pull that paint back just a little bit. And now I'll try this uh, new gamboge. By the way, uh, all of the paints that I'm using today are uh, opaque, I, I mean non-opaque. They are all transparent shades. And I think that's important because we want to stick with this translucent quality of the wing. So we really need to uh, use a, a, a paint that is also very transparent. And I think this uh, these opaque shades will do a fine job in that respect for us. So now I'm going to augment this with the Opera Pink. This is another opaque shade, and I think it will contrast beautifully with this uh, yellow new gamboge that we're using on the, the bright side of the hind wing. You don't want to make it too intense, but this pink is such a luscious shade, I, I get carried away sometimes with its hue and visual beauty. Now the next thing I'm going to do is paint this abdomen on the dragonfly. This is a uh, major part of the body of the, the bug. Um, and I'm just going to give it a, a sort of a rough texture here. I'm not going to uh, make it look too neat because I, I think that's actually how it is on the bug. But uh, I'm using sepia here for this. This is another rich... Uh, brown tone and it is also this is a semi transparent which is is okay in the in the case of the abdomen abdomen here because uh, the abdomen is not part of the translucent part of the bug like the wings are I don't know should I call it a fly instead of a bug maybe that sounds better huh 
<laughs> okay. So we'll just let that dry for a minute here. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back and pick up some uh, raw sienna. This raw sienna uh, I'm going to use for the eyes to give them a little individual color here. And then for the thorax, I'm going to use, I think this duochrome oceanite, oceanic, which is a, a, an iridescent shade, and it's a good shade for the thorax. It contrasts with the abdomen and the wings, and yet it, it's a, a good has a good blending quality because it's also an iridescent shade. So, okay. That's pretty much the thorax. Touch up this abdomen a little bit to make it more even on both sides of the, the body here. You can see this abdomen tapers dramatically in this, this fly. Okay, so I'm going to let it uh, dry just a little bit here because I, I don't want to do any more of the work on the head until we've uh, seen how those current colors are going to, to work. I think I'm going to touch up this this blue. Just a little bit more on the top wing here. The top of this fore wing. It provides a good contrast with the the lavender and the turquoise that we've already applied. So we'll see how this works. Okay, we're going to let it dry for a little bit. I don't want to uh, interfere with the, the paints that have already been applied. You can see I came a little too close here to the hind wing, so I'll see if I can add just a little bit in here to make the blend consistent across both wings. I don't see any uh, disadvantage to that since this is a uh, such a transparent part of the the fly it's not it's not going to be a problem at all so 
It's maybe a little more of the opera pink in here. Okay, so let's let this dry for a few minutes. I think what I can do while we're waiting is apply some of this uh, splatter paint in the application because this is something that is going to be very random anyway and so there's no reason that we need to wait for the rest of the image to dry. I'm going to touch up a few of these little spots in here and give them a little bit more value and quality in the image. And maybe a little bit of the pink, too. I actually like that. Extra long image there. Okay and maybe even a little bit of the iridescent green. This duochrome oceanic. This is a messy part of the process, so be sure that you're not uh, expecting it to be pristine and, and uh, perfect. Uh, I think the irregularity is what makes it perfect, frankly. Okay. Touching up this raw sienna just a bit. Okay, so let's let this uh, this dry for a few minutes, and then I'll come back and do the the legs and a little bit of the outlining here. I've uh, <clears throat> taken my pilot lettering pen and given some definition to the legs here. I haven't made them too uh, precise because I, I think Bugs' legs are pretty much uh, rough in some respects with the pollen and things that they pick up and all of that, so I've purposely not uh, made it too precise. And I put a little definition around the eyes here to uh, give the, uh, the bug some definition in that respect. So we've got uh, back legs here too, of course. Actually, this pilot is uh, perfect for this. It draws a very fine line. This is the uh, 1 1.10 or 10 uh, number on the pen. So it's, uh, it's a very fine line that it draws. and gives it an irregular quality too. So now the next thing I'm going to do is put a little definition in on these wings because we want the wings to have some uh, some specific 
uh, shape and, and you know the veins in these uh, wings is important as well. I'm going to use this Copic Multiliner black brush pen. Uh, it's the small brush uh, for this purpose. And I'm just going to do this irregularly along the edge of the of the forewing here to give it shape and focus but at the same time I don't want it to be too too intense I want this to be very uh, very light as well Okay, uh, I think we need a little definition along this hind wing as well. And perhaps some indication of the, the veins that travel through this wing. Not too much because we certainly don't want the, the veins to become a prominent focus. But I think that's, that's adequate for now. I think I'm going to shape this or outline this thorax a little bit. It's, uh, it's kind of a segmented part of their bodies. So there, how's that? I think the only thing this still requires is just a little bit of black spatter here. To add some additional variation to the background. I think that's probably all it requires. So I think for the most part we're done. So I hope you like this dragonfly. I hope it's given you a little inspiration to try something that you probably uh, uh, would not otherwise address. So I uh, Hope you will push the uh, uh, subscription button and the like buttons, and I will look forward to having you join me again. Thanks very much.